readers, Chris here. Today, I'm going to be talking about all the different types of gifts that you should not give to the bookish people in your life. I was actually working on a video on gifts that you can give book people in your life, but I've seen so many other people do these videos, and specifically a few days ago, I saw a great uh, gift idea video over on Reading and Whatnot's channel, which I will be linking in the description box below. But for some reason, when I was watching her video, it triggered this memory of Many years ago, I got for Christmas from someone in my life a box of used books. And while I'm sure the intention was very nice, I'm a reader, so of course I would want books, the reality was, like, they weren't books that I would probably actually read. So that kind of led me down a rabbit hole of thinking about all the other types of gifts I've gotten over the years that I don't really need. <laughs> so this list is going to be things you should not be getting a bookworm in your life and maybe suggestions for some other things that you could. Of course, this list is totally personal to me. Just because I'm saying I wouldn't want something doesn't mean that it wouldn't work great for a bookworm in your life. And I think we all know that it's easier to buy gifts for the people that we know very well, and it's harder to buy gifts for people that we don't know as well. So that's going to lead me to the number one thing on my list that you should not get a bookworm that you don't know that well, and that's going to be books. <laughs> Hear me out. <laughs> like I just said in my opening story, Books are very personal to us book readers, and even though, even if you're someone who likes to read, like, a variety of genres, chances are most bookwormish people gravitate towards one genre. Like, for me, that's fantasy. For someone else, it might be romance. For someone, it might be horror, etc., etc. So unless you know that person really well, and you know what genre they like, you know what books they want, it's very hard to pick out a book for someone that you don't know that well. If you were to walk into a Barnes & Noble and randomly pick a fantasy book off the, uh, we'll say, the adult fantasy section, there's a 50% chance I already have that book in my collection. There's a 50% chance I've already read that book and gotten rid of it. There's a 50% chance that I'm not interested in that book at all. So if you don't know what someone wants to read, just stay away. And even then, like, these books are both from the same series, but it would annoy me that their covers don't match. One's a tiny soft cover, one's a giant hardback. Very difficult. So first thing that you can do is check to see if the person has some sort of a public wish list. So like on Amazon, you can put a wish list together of specifically what books you want, what versions, what editions, et cetera, et cetera. If that person doesn't have a wish list, then just ask them like, hey, why don't you give me a list of like 10 books you'd be interested in and I can pick one for you. And again, if you're not comfortable doing that because it's someone that you don't know that well, like uh, maybe it's your brother's new girlfriend or uh, your cousin's new wife, whatever it happens to be, the best thing that you can do is just go with a gift card. And yes, I know my mother would say that <laughs> gift cards are not personal, but here's the thing. Picking out a book is hard, so... The best thing you can do is let them pick out their own book. So whether it's an Amazon gift card, an Audible gift card, Barnes & Noble, whatever site you have in your country, that is the best thing to do. Stop trying to pick out books for people you don't know that well, because even if they smile and nod and pretend they like it, they may actually not. So stick away from books unless you know that person extremely, extremely well. Next up on my list is going to be another super popular item, and that is going to be candles. Now, now, wait. Hear me out, okay? 
If you haven't seen it, I would say go on YouTube and look up uh, SNL, Saturday Night Live, their sketch about the peach candle. It's pretty much become a meme and a joke now that um, you can go into your closet and pull out a candle and wrap it up and give it to someone because it's like the easiest thing you can do. Now, to be fair, some people absolutely love candles. In fact, my husband is obsessed with uh, the pine-scented Yankee candle. He absolutely loves loves those candles, so I think I got him one. I think it's under the tree already. But for the most part, like, candles, yes, while they're nice, I feel that, again, they're super unpersonal unless, unless you are specifically going to go for a themed candle. So what do I mean by that? I mean, you can pretty much go anywhere on the internet right now and look up bookish candles. So I have like a Hunger Games candle. I have this cherry blossom one that came with like my anime box. Um, I've gotten some Harry Potter candles, a Hocus Pocus candle. Like there are so many different types of themed candles you can go out and get. So again, try to find out what kind of genre of book you're, the person that you're buying for likes. Um, if you don't know what genre they like specifically, you can find like generic candles that just say things like, you know, reading on them or like have uh, quotes about reading or things like that. So yes, candles can be nice, but only if they're the right kind. So it's going to take a little bit of extra work, a little bit of extra effort and thought to find the right candle for your bookish friend, but it can be done. Again, don't just grab the candle in the back of your closet. <laughs> That's not good enough in this case, at least for me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, auntie, if you're watching. I love your candles. Next up on my list is going to be coffee mugs because a lot of readers, myself included, love to drink when we are reading. For me personally, it's coffee. I know others love to drink tea. Some people might just like to have a glass of water, maybe an iced beverage, maybe an adult beverage, a glass of wine. But whatever it is, uh, coffee mugs are like a super easy gift that you could give for someone who likes to read, right? Wrong. I am telling you, if you know someone who likes to drink coffee or tea, chances are they already have so many mugs in their life that they don't know what to do with them. I swear to God, if I get one more coffee mug from someone, there's nothing else I can do with it but throw it away. I do not have any more room in my life for coffee mugs. And I feel like other people might feel similar. Again, unless you know that that person is obsessed with collecting coffee mugs, which I do technically know someone who loves to collect coffee mugs. So that would be the only person that I could, um, that I would consider getting a coffee mug for. Anyone else, to anyone else that's watching, I don't need coffee mugs. I have the same, like, three that I use every week. They're super, super cute. Not any of the ones I just showed you. I literally have a whole cabinet full of coffee mugs. I do not need another one. I don't care how cute they are. Yes, I love Harry Potter. I do not need another Harry Potter mug, no matter how cute it is. So instead of getting a mug of some sort, I would go with actual coffee or actual tea. Now again, it might take a little bit of extra effort to find out what kind of coffee or tea the person you're trying to buy a gift for likes. Like, um, do they need the little, uh, the little K cups for like a Keurig coffee maker? Do they like regular ground coffee? Do they need tea bags or do they like loose leaf tea? But I think if you take the extra step to find out what they like, that will go a long way more than just another uh, coffee mug. And it's something you know that will actually get used, and I think there's nothing better than that. Next up on my list is going to be apparel, because yes, us bookworms, for the most part, we love to be cozy when we read. So getting someone a comfy shirt, a cozy pair of pants, you would think that would be the perfect idea, right? Wrong. 
Well, no, I'm just kidding. Not necessarily wrong. <laughs> but the thing you want to be careful of, of course, is... It's very difficult to buy apparel for someone you don't know because you don't know what size they wear. You don't know what size shirt they wear. You don't know what size pants they wear. And the <laughs> the last thing you want to do is look at someone go, well, I think that you're a large, and then it turns out they're a small. Eek! You don't want to offend anyone. Second of all, you don't know how nerdy or geeky that person really is. Like me, I can wear a niffler on a shirt and I have no problem going out in public like this. But some people like to keep their nerdy stuff more on the DL. So you have to be careful when buying apparel. So I think the easiest apparel that you could possibly buy if you want to find something bookish for someone is going to be a bookish pair of socks. Everyone loves socks. Everyone can use socks. They keep your feet warm when you're reading and they're cozy. And if someone wants to be like a secret bookworm, then hey, you can hide the fact that you're wearing bookish socks. Now, I'm not going to read out loud what these books say because it's not appropriate to say on YouTube, but you can see really quick here that it says, F off, I'm reading, and these were given to me by one of my best friends. I think they're hilarious. Um, I almost don't want to wear them because I don't want to ruin them, but they're probably the best pair of bookish socks I've ever gotten. So again, you can go on Amazon, Etsy, whatever, and find a pair of bookish socks. Stay away from, you know, regular apparel. Again, unless you know the person super well, know what size they wear and all that stuff, a pair of cozy a bookish socks is a much safer choice. Next up on my list is going to be bookmarks. Oh my God, I know. How could I say that bookmarks are not an appropriate gift for a book reader? Here's the thing, okay? Um, for me personally, for most of my reading life, I never actually used bookmarks. Like I would just use random bits of paper, receipts, uh, I think a toothpick one time as a, uh, as a bookmark. So I really didn't need like an actual bookmark bookmark. And yes, I will say that getting bookmarks can be fun. You know, they can have funny sayings on them. You can get pretty ones that are for like your favorite, uh, your favorite books, your favorite genres, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, like I have way more bookmarks than I will ever need in my entire life. And chances are, if you've been reading books for a number of years, you probably also have more than enough bookmarks that you'll ever need in your entire life. So unless someone, unless you're picking out something that's like super unique, like this metal bookmark or this other metal bookmark that has a little dangly thing on it, unless you're picking out something that's like super unique and super special, I would stay away from bookmarks unless it's just something that you're like sticking in a card. Instead, what you can do, though, which I would definitely recommend, is picking up a bookmark holder. If you have never seen a bookmark holder before, you can find them on Amazon. You can find them on Etsy. They are amazing. They're basically just a little... Uh, a little sachet, a little pouch here where you can stick all of your bookmarks in them and then you can keep them just in one place all together and you'll never have to wonder where to find a bookmark again. This is probably the best bookish gift I've ever gotten. It came in one of my Owl Crate book boxes uh, sometime last year. This thing is super cool. I would definitely say stay away from bookmarks and get a bookmark holder, and that bookish person will probably thank you for it. Next up, I have journals and notebooks. Oh my gosh, how could I say that? I know. Again, if you know someone in your life who loves notebooks, loves journals, uses them all the time, then go for it. 
But here's the thing. The only thing that I use a notebook slash journal for is to keep track of my reading. And the notebook that I use to do that is about 10 years old. I got it at a work conference, so it has the random name of a company on it. Like, it's just a generic notebook. There's nothing special about it. But it has, like, a whole bunch of history in it right now. So that's the only reason I haven't, like, traded it in for a nicer notebook. But again, most readers, people that read and have been reading for a while, they have their own methods of keeping track of their reading. Um, for example, I'm going to use Reading Nymph. She does these bullet journals every month. If you've never seen them over on her YouTube channel, I will link it down below. She puts together amazing, amazing journals like on her own because she's super crafty. If you're not someone that does that, they make specific like reading journals out there you can buy. Some people might love that. Me personally, I'm old school. I literally will just like write down a list of books and check them off as I go. You've probably seen my Stephen King list before in a video. It's literally just a list of books and I check them off as I go. Nothing special about it. My point is I already have a method of keeping track of my reading. I don't need any more notebooks. Um, some other readers will probably feel the same. So again, unless you know that this is something that a reader absolutely needs, I would stay away from it. And even though it sounds corny, I would say pens, markers, or actual writing materials are actually way more helpful than a notebook is. Because again, most of us already have a notebook, but having a special pen, something that writes really, really nice, maybe things that are different colored, that's a much better option if you're looking for a gift for a bookish friend. There's one other thing that I wanted to mention before the end of this video, and that's going to be book stamps. If you don't know what a book stamp is, basically it's a stamp. You can get them either like this is a kind of a generic one that says from the library of. So you would stamp this in the book and then write your name on it. You can also have like custom ones made that have someone's specific name on it. Here's the thing, and this is just me, so... Others may not feel this way, but for me, I am one of those people who, if I have a new book, I do everything in my power to try and make sure that nothing happens to that book. I read it like super carefully, so I try not to break the spine. I'll take the cover off so that I don't ruin the dust jacket on the book. Like I don't dog ear pages. I will do everything in my power to make sure that book looks as new as possible. So the thought of taking ink and stamping inside a book to like claim it as my own absolutely horrifies me. <laughs> absolutely horrifies me. Now I see people do this all the time on Instagram, on YouTube, on TikTok. So yes, there are definitely people out there who would absolutely love this type of idea. So if you are considering a book stamp for someone, find out if that's something that they would like. Find out if they don't want to ruin their books. Find out how much of a monster they are. Just kidding. They can be super cute. They can be super cute. I'm just totally crazy. I, I can't. I can't do it. But they can be cute. So make sure whoever you're buying a book stamp for, make sure they're okay with inking their book. So that brings me to the end of the list. And the last thing that I want to mention, something that you should not buy for bookish people are gift cards. I am totally just kidding. Gift cards are awesome. Gift cards are great. Even though, as I said in the beginning, my mother would argue that gift cards are impersonal, I think gift cards are probably the best choice for bookish people because we can be so particular about what we like. Again, what I like is going to be totally different from what another bookworm would like, which makes it hard. You can, I don't think there's just like one gift that works for like all bookish people. But hopefully this list gave you some ideas on what not to buy bookish people and what you can buy bookish people. I would definitely love to hear in the comments section below any stories you have about bookish gifts that people have given you that you didn't really like, that you didn't want or need. 
I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed putting it together. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel. There will be more bookish stuff coming out this week. Happy reading!